What can we do to reduce transmission? In this lecture, we look at the principles behind it. Remember the basic case reproduction number, R0, the average number of secondary cases per case in a totally susceptible population. If the R0 is greater than 1, the number of cases increases because each case on average gives rise to more than one new case. If the R0 equals 1, that means each case on average gives rise to just one new case, the number of cases is stable. And if the R0 is less than 1, each case on average gives rise to fewer than 1 new cases and the number of cases decreases. If we look at this on the graph, looking at the number of new cases per week over time, if R0 is greater than 1, the number of new cases increases. If R0 is 1, then it becomes stable. And if we get the R0 less than 1, the number of new cases starts to go down. And it is this, of course, that control programs aim to achieve. For Ebola, the R0 measured in different outbreaks in the early stages, somewhere between 1.5 and 2. This is not particularly high. For example, for measles, the R0 is around 15, which is high, and makes measles particularly difficult to control. For rubella, it's around 6, and for flu, somewhere between 1.5 and 3. Of course, it will vary for all of these diseases, depending on context. The R0 is not the only factor that affects the spread of an infectious disease. Another important factor is the serial interval. And the serial interval is the time between the same stage of illness in successive cases in a chain of transmission. The average time of one person transmits to another person between the onset of illness in one person and the onset of illness in the other. And the rate of spread will depend on both the R0 and the serial interval. So in Ebola, Let's say the R0 was 2 in the early stages. The average serial interval that's been measured is somewhere around 2 weeks. And in those conditions, the number of cases would double every 2 weeks. And this is approximately what was seen in Liberia in the early stages of the epidemic, between June and August, an approximate doubling of cases every 2 weeks. Remember that the R0 depends on three factors. The duration of infectiousness, the transmission risk, that's the per contact probability of infection being transmitted between a susceptible and infected individual, and the total contact rate, the average rate of contact between susceptible and infected individuals. Reducing R0 means tackling each of those three factors. So the duration of infectiousness for some diseases can be reduced through treatment. The transmission risk may be reduced through barriers, through distance. This will depend on the type of infection. For example, for sexually transmitted infections, barriers would include condoms. Other barriers may be gloves to reduce actual physical contact and distance to reduce possibility of transmission as well. Reducing the total contact rate, it's reducing the likelihood that susceptibles and infect infectious people come together through isolation and through quarantine. So we have these different measures, treatment, barriers and distance, isolation and quarantine. What can we use for R0? Well, unfortunately, we can't use treatment because we don't have any that reduces the duration of infectiousness. But we can use barriers and distance, isolation and quarantine. These last two factors, the transmission risk and the total contact rate, can be thought of together as the effective contact rate. This is the sort of contact in which infection can be transmitted from one person to another. And it is this that the control measures aim to reduce.